If any man's in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. And if I claim Jesus and I'm still committing the same sins, living the same style of life, then nothing has changed in me. Now, I know I, you can always talk about old timey. And I'm not wanting to go back to the days of my childhood. No air conditioning, slatted pews with nails working out of it, no carpet, no PA system, an upright piano that nobody could play anyway. I'm not wanting to go back to those good old days. Mosquitoes flying around, singing nothing but the blood. I don't want to go back to those good old days. But I will tell you something I'd like for us to get back to. When people came to the altar, cried and prayed their way to old time salvation, got up, changed, nobody had to tell them to quit sinning. They knew. They knew that they couldn't shack up anymore. They knew they had to put the bottle down. They knew they had to put the cigarettes down. They, as far as I know, back when I was a boy, we didn't have to deal with too much drugs. And what happens today? People get a little bit of Jesus and their life never changes. One of the reasons church is in trouble because the home is in trouble. And the home is in trouble because, hear me, there has been a warfare going on and only one side has been warring. And you better believe our enemy is committed. So I long to see the day when people will come to the altar and get up change. And it doesn't take a half an hour. It just takes a made up mind. If my people who are called by my name will pray, now he goes deeper and seek my face. See, seeking God's face is deeper than prayer. Seeking God's face, to seek someone's face is to seek their character. Let the shout of triumph, triumph, rapture we shall be. Rising through the clouds of glory, for Jesus we shall see. Welcome to the Voice of Triumph with Roger R. Woodard. Senior Pastor of Family Worship Center located in Kings Mountain, North Carolina. Pastor Woodard's ministry is reaching a hurting world with the life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Now, from Kings Mountain, North Carolina, here is Pastor Roger R. Woodard. Read with me. Verse 11 and 12. And that knowing the time, That now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Jesus upbraided. Let me just caution you. Listen to what I have to say today. I don't intend to take a lot of time. But this is a direct word and challenge to you. And you need to take it as such. Jesus upbraided the religious people of his day in Matthew 16, 3. Because they had the ability to look at the sky and kind of forecast what the weather was going to be. And he says, you can discern the face of the sky. And we do that. We look at the clouds and say, well, those look like snow clouds or thunder clouds. And we know that when the rain comes through that usually the warm weather goes with it. We've learned and become adept 
tell them you'll call them back later. You can discern the face of the sky, but can you not discern the signs of the times? First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32 says, The men of Issachar, or Issachar, understood the times. One thing to understand the times. But the next line is so important and knew what Israel should do. We look at our world and our circumstances. Some are oblivious to the times. Some are not oblivious. They know, but they don't do anything about it. It's easy to feel like a leaf in the wind, blown along by circumstances, with no real power to do anything about it. And on a world stage, as far as decisions that governments make, that may be so. But we are not helpless in the face of what hell is doing unless we choose to be helpless. The queen stated that she feared the prayers of God's men more than she did all the armies of Europe. Prayer's a mighty weapon. When you and I face circumstances where someone says, well, I'll pray about it, we may feel disheartened if that's all they can do. We'd a lot rather than be able to say, well, I can fix it. But if someone will really pray, I don't mean say, now lay me down to sleep. And I don't mean thank you, Lord, for this meal. I said pray. We know the scriptures. We can quote it from memory in 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people who are called by my name, he's not talking to the world there. He's not talking to the people who claim they know him but don't know him. He said if my people, he owns it, who are called by my name, will humble themselves. Sounds so simple, but it's a tall order for most people. If they will humble themselves and pray, you wouldn't think that would be such a strong admonition to people who say they know God. But when you read Paul's letter to the churches, He says, quit stealing. Quit lying. Why would he have to write that to the church? Because somebody's stealing and somebody's lying and somebody's doing ungodly things in the church. He says, quit doing it. Put off the old man. And so this is, that's Paul. Here's Roger. If you claim Christ and there's no difference in the way you live after you came to Christ, you claim you came to Christ, then when before, if you're doing the, st- the same things, you haven't been saved. If any man's in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. And if I claim Jesus and I'm still committing the same sins, living the same style of life, then nothing has changed in me. Now, I know you can always talk about old timey. And I'm not wanting to go back to the days of my childhood. No air conditioning, slatted pews with nails working out of it, no carpet, no PA system, an upright piano that nobody could play anyway. I'm not want to go back to those good old days. Mosquitoes flying around, singing nothing but the blood. I don't want to go back to those good old days. But I will tell you something I'd like for us to get back to. When people came to the altar, cried and prayed their way to old time salvation, got up, changed, nobody had to tell them to quit sinning. They knew
They knew that they couldn't shack up anymore. They knew they had to put the bottle down. They knew they had to put the cigarettes down. They, as far as I know, back when I was a boy, we didn't have to deal with too much drugs. And what happens today? People get a little bit of Jesus and their life never changes. One of the reasons church is in trouble because the home is in trouble. And the home is in trouble because, hear me, there has been a warfare going on and only one side has been warring. And you better believe our enemy is committed. So I long to see the day when people will come to the altar and get up change, and it doesn't take a half an hour. It just, just takes a made up mind. If my people who are called by my name will pray, now he goes deeper and seek my face. See, seeking God's face is deeper than prayer. Seeking God's face, to seek someone's face is to seek their character. If you seek the face of God, you seek the character of God. We seek His favor. We seek His blessings. But we don't want to be changed. Everybody talks about change as though it's some generic something. Yeah, we could talk about it out there, but when it comes down to me, the realization that there's no static place in God, that you just don't reach a place where you are saved, sitting, souring, satisfied. We're either progressing today or we're regressing. We don't have any more of God in our lives today than we have right now. Doesn't matter what we had in revival. Doesn't matter what we used to be. All we have is what we have right now. And we're only what we are today. Seek the face of God is to seek His holiness. To seek His character. And seek His will at the expense of our own agenda. We we'll only get there by humility, humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt us in due time. Not self-promotion. Oh, but the kicker is turn from their wicked ways. God's people. And when you do that, here's the promise. I will hear. Could it be we are saying prayers that have never even gotten the ear and attention of God because we've never been willing to turn from our wickedness? Oh, Brother Woodard, no, I'm, I'm hauling this. I've been hauling this all of my life. Try this one on for size. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your might, when have we done that? Ask yourself, when have I ever really, truly loved God with my all? Not God plus God. We say God, Jesus is all you need. Well, and I've also said you'll never know that unless Jesus is all you've got. We don't want to be brought to that. I can't say our blameless. But if you will do these things, God says, I will hear your prayer. I will heal your land. And I'll forgive all sin. If we left here today, everybody sick, healed. Every sin forgiven. We don't expect it because we're not going to do the prerequisites. So we come to church, we get what we expect. We get a little goosebumps, a little feel better. We get a little affirmation that we're not lost and not going to die and go to hell. But we don't have the incentive and the determination to enter into battle. I've already said more than I intended to say today. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1, if you'll turn there and read with me, and I'm trying to land this thing. I didn't come with a lot to say. I was going to let the Word say it all. And then, 
Roger, you marked it. Now find it. First Thessalonians 5, 1 Thessalonians 5.1 Listen. If you don't have your Bible, listen. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly, no ambiguity here, that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. As travail upon a woman with child, they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. You're all the children of light and the children of the day. We're not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and of love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. That whether we wake or sleep, we should live together. It doesn't matter whether we live or die, we're going to be with Him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them that labor among you. Everybody that's with you ain't with you. Some folks have been sent in and infiltrated and they're inspired of hell and some people don't even know they're a tool of the devil because their attitudes and their stinking thinking has so corrupted them that they see they become cynics and critics. They're no longer pliable. The Holy Ghost can't mold them. They're stuck in their way and all they see is something bad. The idea of edification and comfort is foreign to them. Know them that labor among you and who are over you in the Lord and admonish you. <laughs> this is also a foreign concept. And esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace among yourselves. Now, we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. It's a full-time job. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. That means everyone. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. He didn't say for everything. He said in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the Spirit. <laughs> Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Here's some good advice. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Well, I wasn't wrong. Did it appear evil? Did it give Satan a chance to speak evil of you, your testimony, your fellowship? And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray for you, thank God, your whole spirit, soul, body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful he is he that called you, who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Every new year, I try to get a word for the year. I've really had a struggle this year. For before the year came, I was given one word. One word that I cannot shake. I am a man that trembles at the thought of saying, Thus saith the Lord. So I'm not going to say, thus saith the Lord. I'm going to leave myself an out enough to say, this may be coming out of Roger's spirit. And I'll continue to seek the Lord to confirm if what I'm about to tell you came from the Holy Ghost 
for me. But I cannot shake this. I came to the service with nothing more I could tell you. I felt, there's a few of you in here that have heard me say it. I've held back. Last year, the Spirit of the Lord I know said, narrow window. I got one word for us today. That word is war. I feel in my spirit. Now, there's been a war going on. We've been in spiritual warfare, whether we've been fighting. I don't know about your house, but at my house and in this body, January 3rd last year, this building froze, and that started us off on a terrible, terrible uh, year of events. Some highs, but was pretty, pretty rough year, a bumpy ride. I'd like, Margaret said, I wish you would be able to tell the people something upbeat and, and, and instead of, I can't tell you any more than what I got in my spirit. War. I can't say for certain that it's just a spiritual war. I, I sense it in my spirit it's more. Actual conflict between nations. I see it converging for a hot war, a real shooting war. I believe it's ominous on us. But I'm not saying God said. I'm saying I feel that in my spirit. But I know this one thing. I know hell has declared war on us. Finances, family unity, health, spiritual struggle. Mover, can you? Get ready. Now you hear me. We're not unaware of Satan's devices. And I'm warning you now. Hell's coming to your house. Hell's going to attack your family. Hell's going to attack your spiritual commitment. But the victory is not in doubt as long as you engage in the fight. But if you think you could passively just ignore what I'm saying and say, now devil, if you'll leave me alone, I'll leave you alone. I promise you he ain't going to leave you alone. And I want us to be proactive. Listen, one more, last scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. For which cause we think not, but though our outward man perish, the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction. Here's a guy, just read the catalog of his persecutions. Beaten three times with a cat of nine tails. Shipwrecked twice. Shipwrecked twice. All kind of things. And then he says, our light affliction, which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, we've got to look behind, beyond what we see and feel. We have to look and see the invisible. The giant is there. He's real. He'll win the day unless we look beyond that giant and see a God that could take one rock and put him flat. The walls are real. They're impregnable. But we've got a God who will bring them down with our shout. We have to believe this. It's more than a Sunday sermon. It's more than a Sunday school lesson. It's more than a psychological pep talk. It's got to be the way we live. We look not at things that are seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. We have to become eternally minded people. We'll bury a church member Tuesday. It tore my heart out to go to that little home that I'd sat with him when Barbara died. 
and saw that little house to think it's now going to be empty. To see where he sat last Sunday. He came here and the last sermon he heard me preach was that we were going into the eternity and we need to take inventory. And I'll never forget when I'd take that little body in my arms and pray for him. But this world is not our home. This world is not our home. We don't need to build our foundation so deep on worldly things here that it will be an anchor when our time comes to go or when the Lord comes for His church. But as long as we're here, we're going to have to fight. In the Spirit, we've got to fight. <coughs> so for that reason, in a few minutes, I'm going to ask us to get on our face. Because of my uncertainty, I don't have a real impressive form. But in the vestibule, there's a sign-up sheet for those who will commit to fasting and praying with me throughout the month of January. Cho choose a day that you will fast that day, or if you can't fast a day, as much as you can on that day. And you'll commit to praying not less than 15 minutes every day. Hopefully more. But I don't want you to bite off more than you can honestly do. And for the entire month of January, I want as many in this congregation who will join the war warfare with me to go to war in the Spirit against this demonic attack on our body as a whole, on your family, your body as a whole, and drive back the forces of hell because we've been given the power to do it. But if we sit around moaning, we sit around feeling sorry for ourselves, we're going to get rolled. I, for one, I'm renewed. I'm ready for the war. No longer is one side going to do the warring. When the hell comes against me and mine, he's coming against a spirit-filled, determined man of God who will stand up to that fight. Oh, we'll take some bruises and we'll bleed. There are always casualties in a war. But we win. Thank you for joining us today for Voice of Triumph. We invite you to check out our website at www.familyworship.org. There you will find information on our church service time, special events, purchase our books and music, and also information on becoming a partner as we continue to take the life-changing message of Jesus Christ to a hurting world. If you'd like to write us concerning our program, our address is The Voice of Triumph, P.O. Box 396, Kings Mountain, 28086, USA. On behalf of Pastor Woodard and the entire Family Worship Center team, God bless you and we'll see you next week.